The small town of Grödig near Salzburg. Here, Walter Gröll and his son Patrick run a fish specialty shop. The locals buy their fresh fish here or pick up their lunch. Only at first glance is it an ordinary village shop. Prawn cocktail or herring salad? The herring, please. Is that okay? Because every now and then, someone comes looking for something else. Something not on display between squirrel tail and rainbow trout, but hidden away in cold storage. It is the choicest delicacy that can be served to a gourmet. The price is correspondingly high. 450 euros. White caviar from the albino sturgeon. A single gram costs 15 euros. On the world market, a kilo can cost up to 65,000 euros. This makes it the most expensive food in the world. A few hundred meters from the shop, the breeding farm of Walter and Patrick Gröhl. Here, their white treasure lives under strict guard. Albedo sturgeons are extremely rare. They lack a gene to produce melanin. That is the reason for their white color. Breeding them on a large scale is virtually impossible. Nevertheless, 15 years ago, Walter Gröhl started experimenting. Over the years, he tried out many things until he found to give this genetic coincidence a helping hand. But he doesn't want to reveal exactly how he did it. It's certainly the most difficult kind of sturgeon breeding, but it's also interesting and very funny, always doing something that's too difficult for others. Of most interest to him are the females. They produce the coveted cavia. The greatest challenge of albino breeding, the white sturgeons are susceptible of diseases and mustn't get too much sun, otherwise they get sunburned. Clean stream water, protein-rich food, no additives. Walter Gröhl keeps the sturgeon in an outdoor pool together with trout and char, even though the caviar would mature faster in breeding halls. The basic prerequisite is to have respect for the fish, from rearing right to the end. The less stress I put on them, the better the end product will be, and you feel better in yourself. Sturgeon farming requires patience. On average, it takes 12 years for the animals to spawn for the first time. Patrick was eight years old when his father got his first albino sturgeon. At 20, he experienced harvesting the wild gold for the first time. I actually wanted to do something completely different, but it turned out differently and the path I'm taking now is excellent. The profession has become my vocation and I'm doing it with the same enthusiasm as the old man. The Grölz only produce white caviar that's pre-ordered. Like today, a star restaurant ordered 150 grams. All the fish in the tank are spawning females. So now Patrick just has to find the right sturgeon. Careful that nothing happens to them. Because with one false step, Patrick could break the sturgeon's back, and that would be quite expensive if it happened. All these fish are very delicate, especially the albino sturgeons. They are very, very vulnerable, and you have to be very careful with them. We've also had years where 40,000 fish were born, and after six months, there was only one that survived. A quick pressure test on the belly shows that this female is not quite ready yet. Take another one, then. If it's too firm, then usually the caviar is not ripe yet. That one feels good. The two men think they found a sturgeon with mature caviar. It's perfect. It's got a good feel to it. I'll put it in the front tank right away. Anyone producing caviar, breeding sturgeon, shouldn't expect to be seeing big dollar signs. It takes us 12 to 14 years before we're perhaps successful for the first time. I breed sturgeon and maybe produce caviar because I enjoy it. Because it's a vision and the vision, it seems, is slowly becoming reality. Final certainty is provided by veterinarian Tamara Frank. She uses ultrasound to decide whether it's the right time to remove the caviar. Hello, Tamara. Hello. And how are you? Perfect. To get white caviar in perfect quality, the extraction time is crucial. Only the ultrasound can reveal whether this fish is the right one. Oh. 
You can see the flocculent image here very nicely. The white part are the eggs. You can see very clearly that they show up really nice and flaky, and that shows the fish has beautiful caviar inside. But just because the sturgeon is full of eggs doesn't mean the quality is right. The biopsy provides the final proof. Tamara Frank makes a millimeter incision in the abdominal wall with a scalpel and takes a sample with a syringe. The caviar is perfect. It no longer sticks together. The grain size is ideal. It's simply the work of 12 years where you can see that you haven't actually made a mistake. Well, I treat every animal I kill with great respect, because the animals basically die for me so that I can continue to live. With every fish I kill, I thank them inwardly. It has to be done with a lot of respect and properly, so that the animal notices as little as possible, and so that the whole thing is done quickly. Then you can sleep peacefully at home. The name caviar supposedly comes from the Iranian word kavya, translated as cake of joy. In the past, caviar was a poor man's food. Because the eggs didn't keep for long, fishermen on the Caspian Sea ate it themselves. Aww. From the 19th century onwards, caviar arrived at the court of the Russian Tsar and the Persian Shah. From then on, it became a luxury product. The challenge was to deliver it fresh as quickly as possible. High-ranking visitors to the court were served the speciality. The more important the visitor, the more caviar. Soon the delicacy was also in demand among kings and emperors in Western Europe too. Back in the fish shop. Patrick now takes care of the caviar production. When cutting it, he has to be careful not to damage the gallbladder, otherwise the eggs would be spoiled. It's great to see. An albino sturgeon has around 300 grams of caviar. This one is a real beauty. That's around four to 500 at least. Patrick sells 500 grams for 7,500 euros. On the world market, this amount can fetch up to 31,500 euros, especially in this quality. You can see from the egg grain, from the egg firmness, if you press this together a little bit, nothing happens yet. On the palate, the whole thing should then open up. But as I said, the form is now perfect, so you couldn't imagine anything better. The albino's eggs are smaller than those of the normal sturgeon. With careful circular movements, Patrick loosens the eggs. Too much pressure and the grains will burst. A tiny mistake can be very costly. There's pressure involved with such a high-quality product, so we do our best to make sure mistakes don't happen. That's why we pay a lot of attention to timing so that everything goes well. Mistakes can always happen. We're all human and not machines. After washing, Patrick only has five minutes. If he waits any longer, the eggs will swell up and no longer absorb salt. The salt preserves the caviar and removes moisture. Patrick weighs it out exactly. Too much salt would alter the taste of the caviar. After draining, Patrick fills the white gold into 30 gram tins. Well chilled, the delicacy can be kept for two or three months. How did it turn out? Good, actually. I'm just packing the last cans. I'll taste it. Let's both have a taste. Caviar connoisseurs taste the noble product from the back of their hand. It's slightly warm and tastes best that way. It's turned out perfectly. You did a great job. I couldn't have done it better. I had a good teacher. Nothing comes from nothing. Of course, it's a great feeling when you can now sell a perfect product and since we put a lot of heart and soul into every tin, you're very happy when you've sealed it and can put it into cold storage and then everything's finished. Walter Gröll even has customers in Hong Kong, but the most important man for him is middleman Peter Schmutz. I need eight times 50 grams, 
6 times 125 and 6 times 50 white. Peter Schmutz specializes in expensive and exclusive delicacies and travels all over Austria, the main sales area for white caviar. However, he only sells tins like this a few times a year. The market for white caviar is of course relatively small due to the price. It appeals to a few top restaurants and top hotels and also a few private customers. Its rarity accounts for the high price of the delicacy. Only 12 kilos are produced worldwide each year. One hundred fifty kilometers away in Mauterndorf, Austria. This is where Patrick Gröhl delivers today's caviar order. This restaurant has received three Hauben, Austria's top cooking award. Josef Steffner cooks here. He's a regular buyer of black caviar and only recently discovered the rare delicacy of albino sturgeon for himself. Oh, can I have a quick taste? A quick, albeit expensive, quality test. A plus, very good, very fine. This caviar is really first class. When preparing white caviar, the rule is less is more. Josef Steffner sticks to simple ingredients like potatoes and eggs. But you should never combine caviar with any citrus fruits or tomatoes or acidic foods because that destroys the caviar taste. Mashed potato with nut butter and sour cream on confit egg yolk with 7 grams of white caviar. That makes 210 euros. The first time we ate white caviar, it was actually unbelievable to be able to enjoy it and then to imagine that you've eaten so much money. It's a very weird moment. Susanne Greiner and Anne Klimper come here regularly from Munich. Today the couple are treating themselves to white caviar for the first time. The precious delicacy is eaten with a mother of pearl spoon. With metal, the caviar would oxidize and lose its natural taste. A bit of extravagance, a bit of luxury, that's always something special. It's something you do on rare occasions and then you enjoy it all the more. It's indescribable, just wonderful. For Patrick, the day is not over yet. He has made another trip to the breeding station. In winter, leaves and dirt often clog up the inflow to the fish tanks. Cleaning is his last task for today. You have to dedicate your whole life to it, but it's not really a sacrifice because you like doing it. And the fish don't really care whether you're sick, whether it's cold, whether the sun's shining. You just have to be there for them because they depend on you. Patrick's mind is made up. He wants to take over his father's fish farm later and dedicate his life to fish, so that the most expensive food in the world will continue to come from Austria.